Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'll be reviewing this Vivor water distiller. You might be wondering why I'm reviewing a water distiller on a tech channel. Well, the fact is, I use a lot of distilled water for cleaning computer PCBs when I'm finished repairing them. So I wanted to find out whether it's better to make my own distilled water or keep buying it in the bottle. For those without any clear idea of what distilled or demineralized water is or how it's made, here's a quick explanation. Feel free to use the chapters in the description if you want to skip this bit. Here comes a bit of science, so naturally I have to wear a lab coat. Distillation is the vaporizing of a liquid into gas, followed by condensing the gas back into a liquid. In the instance of water, that involves heating it to 100 degrees Celsius, where it will boil and vaporize into steam. If you then cool that steam down, it will condense back into water. For the pedants out there, the temperature for boiling water does vary based on atmospheric pressure, and 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature that water boils at sea level. Sorry, I had to include that or I would get comments. So what's the benefit in doing this? Well, when the water boils, only the pure hydrogen and oxygen vaporizes and anything else in the liquid is left behind. That includes any impurities, minerals, bacteria or metals, meaning that when the steam condenses back into a liquid, it's theoretically completely pure. I say theoretically because some impurities can make their way back into the distilled water quite quickly. That's enough of that. Distilled water has a range of uses because of its purity. It's used for topping up lead acid batteries in cars, it's recommended for use in humidifiers and steam irons, and it can be used as drinking water. However, the process does remove some important minerals and nutrients the tap water contains, like calcium and magnesium, so it's not necessarily recommended as a long-term replacement for drinking. I also use distilled water mixed with detergent in my ultrasonic cleaners. If you'd like to see my review of the Vivor 30 litre ultrasonic cleaner, there's a link here. Distilled water is pretty cheap to buy, so one of the things I'll be doing in this video is figuring out if it makes sense to make your own, or if it's just easier buying it in the bottle. I actually made my own homemade distiller some time ago. It comprised of a pressure cooker on a stove and a plastic pipe coiled in a bucket. The bucket was then filled with cold water to aid in the condensation process. It was a successful experiment, but I had a lot of trouble with the water in the bucket gradually getting hotter and hotter, which reduced the efficiency of the condensation. Thankfully, these purpose-built distillation units don't have this problem. Let's see what's in the box. Instructions. Uh, installing the handle is uh, pretty straightforward, but the little rings around here are loose. They sort of feel like they're supposed to be tight, but I guess that's okay. I mean, uh, I think it will still work. There's a little container here of detergent. It says this product can be applied to get rid of the dirt on the surface of the inside stainless steel liner of the family used distilled water machine. So obviously once the distillation goes through, you're left with the sediment on the bottom, and this is obviously designed to help get rid of that sediment. Okay, so there's nothing that actually clamps the top onto the bottom. Uh, so I guess I just have to uh, resist the temptation to uh, kind of lift the whole thing up if it's full of water with the danger that this top's going to pop off. Um, we'll see, once I've actually got it full, whether that is a danger. Uh, we have this little uh, connector here, power connector. So there's input power here and the output power there. Plug that into the output so that the power is going in here, passing through into this top section. As far as I can see, just looking down here, this top section will uh, cool the liquid down so that it condenses back into a liquid. This, oh, this comes apart. And then it looks like we've got a little active charcoal in there. Insert the charcoal packet into it, reattach and secure it into the distiller 
onto the seal as lid is shown. Check that the seal remains in place. Okay, so we've got a few replacement charcoals here. We've got one, two, three bags, plus the one that was in there already. Well, I think the next step will be to fire it up and see what it can do. Make distilled wine. Put the steaming rack into the liner of the main engine and place the materials used for steaming wine on it. Okay, so that's uh, a different process. I can't see myself using that. I have no intention of actually uh, making alcohol from it. Let's go to put some water in here. This is about, I guess about a litre or so. Power. Ooh, look at that. Celsius. I want that on Celsius. There we go. Setting 100. Okay, so this says the default temperature is 105, but it's actually on 100. I'll put it on 105. That's telling me it's going to run for 2 hours and 40 minutes. Fan in the top is spinning away furiously. Okay, I can actually see that is definitely increasing in temperature. Started off at 22, now it's at 32. So it is definitely doing its thing. Okay, well, it is happening. We've hit 100 degrees C there, and I can already see liquid starting to come out of the distiller. I've decided to take a sneak peek inside the condenser. So let's open her up. That is one long screw. There really isn't much to this condenser at all. There's basically a fan on the top, which is powered by an AC motor. And then you've got this aluminium piping, which starts here under this cover. It comes straight up. It does three full rotations and then comes out to the spout here. The pipe's covered in all this finning, which helps to dissipate the heat. There are a whole range of distillers available for a whole range of prices. The main things that dictate the price are the capacity of the unit or how much liquid it can hold, the heating power, which in turn dictates how fast it can distill, and the controls. Some units only have a simple on-off button, whereas a unit like this has temperature control as well as a programmable countdown timer. In the future, I plan to use this to distill isopropyl alcohol, so the temperature control is essential, but I'll cover that in a later video. This particular distiller is the top of the line. It has a large water tank, 1000 watt high power distillation, temperature controls, countdown timer, and a glass jug. You may not need all of this, but these are the things to look out for if you're buying one. The manual claims it can distill 1.5 litres per hour, or one gallon in approximately two hours and 40 minutes. One other useful feature it has is anti-dry protection. It detects if the tank inside is empty and will automatically shut off. However, you do want to try and avoid this if possible. If the tank gets completely dry, it tends to bake any of the leftover impurities to the inside of the tank, making it quite difficult to clean. So it's a good idea to stop the process while there's still a little liquid left inside. The tank capacity is advertised as 4 litres, but in my tests it falls a little short of that. When filled to the maximum fill line, it's actually 1 US gallon, or around 3.8 litres. The top section or condenser has its own power cable and is plugged into the socket at the base. Be aware that the unit will still power on even if the condenser isn't plugged in. So make sure you don't forget or it won't be able to cool properly. The unit has two heating modes. One is for bringing the water to boiling point, the other is to maintain the boiling. In my test, the unit used about 1600 watts during the initial boiling phase and 1000 watts during the distillation process. You don't need to worry about controlling the two heating modes as it does all of this automatically. For a full tank, it takes about 15 minutes to bring the water to boil. The condenser fits into the base with a rubber O-ring seal. It's enough to stop any steam escaping, but is still pretty easy to remove when needed. I feel like the handle at the top is a bit of a deception, as it feels like it's designed for lifting the whole unit, but given the condenser is only held in place with an O-ring, I wouldn't recommend that. There is a power button at the bottom right of the controls. When you press this, the unit will immediately start heating. The plus and minus buttons will adjust the heating temperature. If you want to change the timer, use the set button to select the digit you want to change, then use the plus or minus buttons to make a change to the selection. Wait a few seconds and the change is applied. There is also a button that allows you to toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit display. 
So one big question, is it worth distilling your own water when it's so cheap to buy? Here in Sydney, distilled water sells for around $1 per litre. I can buy a 2 litre bottle from my local grocery store for $2.30, which isn't very expensive at all. But I did some tests on the electricity consumption of this distiller, and it cost me around $0.65 cents in electricity to distill 2 litres, so definitely cheaper for me. However, that doesn't take the initial outlay of the distiller into consideration. You'll need to distill quite a bit before your savings cover the cost of the distiller. The other advantage is the convenience. The distiller has a pretty small footprint, so keeping it on the kitchen bench and distilling water on demand saves you from having to go and buy a bottle. Not to mention that water is heavy, so if you're having to buy a large quantity, it can be quite a task lugging at home. Another consideration is the plastic. If I want to buy 10 litres of distilled water from my local grocery store, I'll be coming home with 10 kilograms of water and 275 grams of plastic. So distilling your own can also save on plastic waste. Time to put the cleaner through its paces with a few practical tests. To start with, I'll be filling the tank to its full 3.8 litres and letting it run for 2 hours and 50 minutes to see how much distilled water we get. The water took almost exactly 15 minutes to come to boiling point, leaving 2 hours and 35 minutes of distillation time. So in theory, we should be able to distill the full 3.8 litres by the end, if the 1.5 litres per hour claim is accurate. These infrared images show the unit in action. The base is around 52 degrees Celsius, so quite warm to the touch. The condenser blows warm air upwards while it's operating, but the liquid coming out of the spout isn't hot at all, just over 30 degrees as it leaves the spout and cooling to around 25 degrees in the jug. Once the distillation cycle was complete, I weighed the jug contents and it contained 3,702 grams of distilled water. So that's almost exactly 3.7 litres. A little bit short of the predicted 3.8 litres, but pretty close. So by my calculations, I got around 24 millilitres per minute, or 1.43 litres per hour, just shy of the advertised 1.5 litres per hour. So in my tests, setting the timer to 2 hours and 50 minutes for a full tank will stop the process just before it runs dry. If you're distilling a smaller amount of liquid, you can use the following table for setting the timer. These times are based on using this 1000 watt unit and the water starting temp at 22 degrees Celsius. I have here two litres of gross, disgusting, mouldy, stagnant water with bits in it. I'm going to pop this in the distiller and see what comes out. Ew. Uh. <laughs> Well, there you have it. We have turned this into this. Impressive. I have two litres of water here mixed with about 200 grams of salt. So it's pretty salty water. Just how salty? Very, very salty.
Well, looks good to me. Cheers. Much better. Time for the biggest challenge yet. I have here some sweetened caffeinated motor oil. We're going to pop this in the distiller and see if we can make it drinkable. Bottoms up. We just made Coke healthy. I've got one more thing I want to test out, and that's the anti-dry protection. So I've put one litre of water into the distiller. I'm going to run it until it automatically stops, and then we'll see what it looks like inside. The anti-dry has stopped the distillation process with just a few puddles of water left in the tank. In summary, I think the Vivor distiller is a very handy addition to any home. Distillers vary greatly in price and this unit is right at the top of the range. This one has the high power heater, programmable countdown timer and temperature, and a glass jug. From my perspective, I really like the programmable controls and the fast distillation times of the high powered heater. So in my opinion, it's worth the extra dollars. On the other hand, the glass jug is no biggie for me. I'd be happy with a plastic one. I have only one real criticism and it's these metal hoops around the jug that attach to the handle. I don't know if this is a mistake or if it's actually designed to be loose like this, but it feels a bit wonky. The handle still works, but a couple of times I've grabbed it at a weird angle, the hoops have spun around and it's given me a heart attack because it feels like it's falling out of my hands. To combat this, I 3D printed these strips out of TPU flexible filament and placed them under the metal rings. The handle is now firm and the rings don't slip. I feel like the handle on the top of the condenser just screams out to be used for lugging the unit around, but doing so runs a real risk of the two parts separating while carrying, so it's not advisable. Only use the handle for separating the condenser from the heater. The unit is just over 40 centimetres high and has a diameter of 24 centimetres. It fits quite nicely on my kitchen bench without taking up too much space. The condenser cooling is excellent with the water coming out of the spout just above room temperature. Considering it's cooling the vapour down from 100 degrees Celsius in such a small space demonstrates its efficiency. I used the supplied descaling detergent a couple of times and it works brilliantly. Just dissolve a little in some hot water inside the tank, let it sit for a few minutes and then scrub the inside gently with a soft dish brush. Rinse it out and you're good to go. So, is it better to buy a distiller or just buy distilled water? This will vary based on your requirements, but for me, it's worth having the distiller. I go through quite a lot of distilled water and it's really convenient being able to just fill up the distiller, set a timer and walk away. Come back and you've got a gallon of distilled water ready for use. I'd like to thank Vivor for sending me this distiller. I received it free of charge, but I've not been paid for my opinions, which are always open and honest. If you'd like to buy one, there are links in the description as well as a discount code. Thanks for watching. Please look out for my follow-up video where I'll be using this distiller for cleaning isopropyl alcohol.